Hello, my name is Ryan Shaver and I'm with the North Carolina Masonry Contractors Association. Today we're going to be working on a couple things with full head joints and full bed joints. I'm going to show you some techniques that will work on the job for spreading mortar, buttering full joints. I'm also going to show you some of the things that we typically see on the job, such as clip joints or single joints, double head joints, overspreading of mortar, uh, just some things that are typical that we can work on with our guys in the field. So stay with us today. We're glad you're with us. Today we're going to be talking about full head joints. So we've got one course of brick here laid, and I want to point out this head joint right here. So to have a full head joint, that means 80% of that head joint must be full on clay brick. So if we look here, I can tell you that this head joint is perfectly 80%. Now after I spread the mortar on top for the bed joint on this right here, we'll notice that that will become full. So we'll show you that technique along with a couple other techniques that we don't want to see on the job. So I want you to spread, furrow, shave the excess, and then I want to taper the back of that. I want to keep the cavity clean on cavity wall construction. So watch that one more time. So I load my trowel, flick my wrist, roll the trowel, furrow, shave the excess, and then I want to taper the back just like that right there. So that's a good way to keep the cavity clean on cavity wall construction. All right, we talked about that head joint 80% being full, so I've spread over the top of that head joint. So let's remove the mortar and see what the, what the head joint looks like. I was 80% before I spread, so let's remove this little bit of mortar right here, and let's check this. And if you'll notice, that little void on the top right there is perfectly full now. So we've got a full head joint, 100%. So spreading techniques help a lot with that head joint as well, but we want to apply that head joint and be full as we possibly can when we, when we apply. Now I've got my head joint buttered on the brick, as you can see, and that's a full butter on a head joint. So watch me apply this brick and let's, let's watch how the head joint reacts. So I lay this brick up to the line, shave my excess mortar nice and neat, keep my mortar on my trowel, that way I can reuse it. And now let's look at this head joint. It's perfectly full, front to back, solid, nice, full head joint. All right, now we're going to show that process from start to finish. So I've got my brick, I've got my mortar on my trowel. So I'm going to butter this joint, just like that right there. Nice full joint. And then I'm going to lay this brick right into place. So I lay that brick into place, get it right to the line. Notice my full head joint. Top to bottom, front to back. That's a nice, good full head joint. That's what we want to see applied on the job. So now let's show another technique. So we can show a double joint. I'm going to give an instance on a double joint. So when you see a mason on the job, this is a, just a double joint. So that's a double joint right there. So I'm going to lay this double joint into place, get it to the line, shave my excess. Now look at the void that I have from top to bottom in that head joint. My face shell on the brick is pretty much full left and right, but top to bottom I have a little bit of an issue because I have a void straight now. So a double head joint does not get you completely full. Now let me show you another technique. So we're going to spread our mortar back out, furrow, furrow our mortar, taper slightly. Now this is another joint that you see on the job a lot. So let's see how it reacts when we lay it in place. So I lay that brick in place, get it right to the line, and notice what's wrong with my head joint. Man, we're close, but we've got that cavity right there that's still not full. So the best technique that I've found to keep your head joint completely full is like we started out with. And that keeps you nice and full, front to back, top to bottom, on a clay unit. So I'm going to show you how to butter a full head joint. So I've got my modular brick, I load my trowel, and this is how I butter a full head joint, just like that. I want it to look nice and full, and then when I lay that brick in place, get it right to the line. If you'll notice my head joint now, my head joint's perfectly full in the front, perfectly full in the back, perfectly full on top. So that's what we want when we butter a full head joint. We want to butter that brick and apply it where we get that end result, which is that full head joint. Now we're going to talk about a clip joint. 
A clip joint is a single head joint such as that. We see that a lot on the job, but let's see how that applies when we lay it. So I lay that brick up, I get it right to the line, I look at it on the face side where I'm at and it looks great. The problem I have is this huge void. Front, it looks good, but the back and top and bottom, I have a huge void. So that's more of a single style head joint or a clip joint that we see a lot of times applied. So let's try to avoid that. All right, the next one I wanna show is a double head joint. So watch this. This is just a double head joint on the job. So you see how I applied the double head joint. And then we're gonna apply that brick in the wall and see what it finishes out to look like. Now the double head joint looked really good, all right? Back, front looks good, but I've got a void from top to bottom in the center of the clay unit. So we really wanna be careful with that double head joint to avoid that top and bottom void. Now this is another style that I see on the job a lot, and the mason will hit it here, hit it there. That looks like it'd be nice, good, and full when it's laid in the wall. And on the front side, on the face side, man, it looks great. But if you notice, I still have that void right here. I still have a visible void and it's not completely full or 80% full on that joint. So we need to really focus on how we apply that mortar before we lay the brick. And again, I'll show you the best one after we've reviewed these three is I like the nice full head joint such as that right there. That head joint will actually be nice and full face side, back side, top and bottom. Nice full head joint. TMS 402602. Anybody familiar with TMS 402602? All right, it's, it states 80%. All right, the 80%, let's look at this brick. It's got face shells, just like a block. Everybody with me? So the outer face, inner face, you've got a face shell. So that 80% is not, considering this back here, the 80% is the void in the middle. So you've got to be full up to less than 20% of that joint. You with me? Yeah. All right. Now, has everybody noticed how I've been spreading? Do I look like I'm, you ever see chicken wing guys on the job? Anybody ever seen chicken wing guys? All right, everybody, everybody with me on chicken wing. What happens with chicken wing? Oh my God, it's everywhere. Chicken wing just, all right, so that's why I wanna really teach and focus on when I teach students, load my trowel like a piece of pie, flick my wrist, roll the trowel, dump, pull. This is your steering wheel. If I see a guy doing this, that's called chicken wing. All right, I don't like seeing that because I'm more effective I can control my mortar way better by using my thumb and my wrist action. You guys ever see a lot of that on the job? Every job, yes, every job. All right, if I'm looking at that. For the last 40 years, every job. If I'm looking at this brick, everybody see that? What did it look like over here? Holy cow, man, that looks good. All right, let's look back here. We're gonna make it. We're close, aren't we? And then making sure when I lay that next brick, I pull it in. So look what happened to that mortar. So there's multiple techniques you can use on the job to achieve that full joint. If we had somebody, let's, let's use this section right here, okay? If we took this out of the wall in three months from now, would that pass the inspection? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay? Absolutely, because visibly from this side, from the back side, and visibly from the face side, we're, we're really good, okay? So what you wanna try to do is have your guys in the field to get to that point. This is, this is how my students would spread a lot of mortar. Y'all with me? My students, would, my students would spread mortar like that right there, all right? And then when they lay, you know, here's what we'd get. And I'm going to show you what we'd get. 
So they'd have their mortar spread nice and tall like that. Man, it's almost as tall as the line. Look at the back side. Holy cow. Front side looks good, doesn't it? What's happening in the back back there? Look at that right there in my wall. Now, let me show you a technique like the technique that I talked about. I spread my mortar nice and smooth. Okay. I'm going to furrow just like that. And then I can taper. Okay. I like to taper that. All right, now I've got two more brick to lay with the gobber joints. So let me lay those. And then let's get to where I've actually tapered my mortar. Man, I got enough mortar on the trowel to lay three more brick after I cut the mortar off of that. And that's what I try to explain to my students. All right. Now the next brick we're going to get into where I actually tried to spread my mortar correctly. All right, let me lay one more and then we're going to look. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? What do we do in the instance of a closure brick? My head joint's just right, waiting on me, right? All right. What's waiting right here? Nothing. Okay. Why couldn't I do something like this? And then on the brick on my way over, Everybody with me? So I had double the opportunity. How long did that take me? Same way with a block, closure block, man. You gotta, you gotta really be careful on that closure block. I've got double the chance of making it full and not having to point up. All right, because pointing up doesn't pay us anything, does it? I mean, I had never got, I mean, y'all might, I, I haven't figured that one out, but uh, when you lay in these brick, I want them in the wall, I want them in the wall effectively where we get paid for them the first time while they're going in the wall. If you see a guy coming back, this drives me crazy. You see a guy coming back, and this is how he's tooling the wall, you got a problem, okay? You got a problem. So that's where I really want to stress full joints because that takes all that out of the equation. Then all I got to do is have a joiner in one hand and a brush in the other, okay? And I can tool the wall effectively because the wall's full. All right, so what you're saying is put your joint on, set the brick down in there, and then coming back and doing this right here. All right, the only reason I don't like that is because if, I, if you look on my face side and you look on my back side since I didn't double it up, sloshing that joint still doesn't get me full on my front and back face. So that's why I like the technique when I was teaching my guys is I got a joint here waiting on me, right? And then I have another joint right here waiting on me. That way when I butter, I don't have to butter as full as I normally would, but when I butter and insert that brick, then my front, back, everything's nice and full. And even if I do slosh it a little bit and have to point it, I'm still full. So I still like to teach that you know, on that closure brick, have a little bit of mortar there waiting on you. That way, you know, when you go in, you don't have to slosh it. But So 30 degree angle is the butter that I like to teach. All right, if I lay this joint down too flat, what happens when the next unit comes in? Exactly. And like you're talking about, if I lay that unit where it's sticking straight up and, and could tail out when I lay that brick. So I like to teach the 30 degree angle when I teach buttering. I teach 30 degree. That way when you turn it upside down, you're on there good. You don't have to worry about losing your head joint. Now another thing that I'll tell you that aggravates me, and y'all guys see this on the, on the job too. All right, notice my, notice my wrist action. All right, do you, uh, you guys ever see this on the job? Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, we're not paddling a boat. We're not on the new river, okay? Can't stand that. How long does that take right there to paddle the boat? What you doing to your mortar right here? See what I'm saying? Then I gotta shave a ton off the front and still I'm, I'm getting a ton back here and if this is a cavity wall, what's happened to that mortar that I paddled? Okay, so that's why when I spread, I like to teach that 
And if I see a guy on the job paddling, I like to teach him that because it's smoother, quicker, and it doesn't make a mess in my mortar. And then look, all I got to do to taper, and I'm ready to go, okay? Anybody ever been on the job and see this? All right, you know what I'm talking about, you see that? What I would tell the kids, how's that helped other masons on the line? See, I can butter, if you got your mortar spread right, watch how many times I go back to the pan. You with me? So if your mortar is consistently spread correctly, you never have to go back to the pan. And you don't, how many times did I touch that line? Head joint. What is a full head joint on a CMU? The width of the face shell on each side. All right, unless it's spec, solid. But full is the width of the face shell. The bed joint has to be full too, so what constitutes a full bed joint on the face shell as well? Now you cross webs, if this spec, you know, if you got a grouted core, you know, block it off, but your face shell is what determines that. Because we've had a couple of jobs across the state where the architect said full, well full is the face shell. All right, if you want to spec something, the word that has to be used is solid. We dictate a full, Head and bed joint as the face shell thickness. What's a full butter on a soldier unit? You got it. Okay. If you see this on a soldier unit in the wall, and you'll see that every now and again. All right, so we're going to draw a line in our trowel. Everybody see that line? And that's how we're going to butter this brick. And I just do that to keep them all the way around when I teach that. All right, let's talk about a roll lock. Roll lock. Nope. Nope. Now you'll see some guys on a roll lock, they'll, you know, they're down there too. But I promise you, if, it, if I'm butter right and spread right, I'm gonna be fine. All right, let's look at my technique. Do I come straight in? What's my technique? Because I gotta get my thumb out of the way, right? My thumb, when I teach, I. You, you don't lay that brick like that, because what happens? You're in, you're in the next man's way. I teach that tilt in like we're talking about. See that? My bottom's fate is, is set, and then now my thumb's out of the way, and I never touch that line. And look at my joints. What about a header? Mm -mm. All right, anytime you got a header in the wall, that's not going to pass for you. All right? Make sure that you've got that header at least like that. So as you can see, we've tooled out the front face of the wall, and that's highly important because that's what the, is visible to our customers and our general contractors and folks we work for. But like we've shown you in the video, the backside, full head joints, full bed joints, is just as important. So let's really take note of that. Um, tooling and neatness makes our work really look great. But also full joints is what makes our craftsmanship stand above anyone else. So thank you for joining us today. For more information about the North Carolina Masonry Contractors Association, visit ncmca.com.